suicidal, go ahead. But coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Thank you for joining me today. Having some wonderful Headbangers brew today. And this is the kind in the berry mug. Look at that. I love you very much. <laughs> Blueberries in it. So good. And folks, that and all of our coffee mugs, our t-shirts, our posters, nine different blends of coffee, soon to be ten, right here. We are metalwearefamily.com. Well, it's an explosive question today, and I want you to listen to me carefully, because this is important. Dear Pastor Bob, if someone commits suicide, do they suffer eternal life in hell? My church teaches that it is a murder and we should punish and we should be punished for it. What is your opinion? Well, that is not my opinion. And folks, I really understand the, the distress that people go through. I've been through that kind of intense stress as well. I'm sure you have too. And so many of you that are watching me right now have felt suicidal. Now, what does that mean exactly? We feel like something needs to die and we assume that it's us. Well, you're right that something needs to die. Suicide, yes, go ahead, but don't kill yourself. Kill whatever it is that's making you feel that way. That's the answer. And folks, this is an important thing because so many people feel it these days and they feel trapped within their feelings and trapped within their situations and circumstances. Like the only way out is to kill themselves because they feel like something needs to die. Well, it's true, something needs to die. Decide what it is and kill it. Whatever it is, those negative emotions that you have, the, the unresolved relationships you need to resolve, all of those things, something needs to die. Your, your viewpoint on it, your, your involvement with it, whatever it is, but don't kill you. That's not, that's never been the answer. The answer has always been to kill something that isn't working, something that's leading you down that path of feeling discouraged and that you want to give it all up. I've had many people close to me who have committed suicide. I'd love to say that isn't true. And I'd love to say that my relationship with them was enough and my my involvement with them was enough so that they wouldn't do it, but that isn't true. Some people are overwhelmed, and I have some friends who are Christians who have committed suicide. And sometimes the person you least expect. You know, you, you look and you see somebody that's happy and somebody that seems joyful all the time, and, and you say, that guy is the least, you know, that's somebody I wouldn't expect to commit suicide. And yet it happens. And people are amazed and thinking, I never saw that coming. I never would have imagined, yeah. Because like all of us, we have that feeling that at time, that from time to time that something needs to die. Well, we're overwhelmed during that time. We're, you know, not thinking correctly there's a lot of factors that go into it. And what you have to do is figure out what needs to die and kill it. Now the question says, if someone commits suicide, do they suffer eternal life in hell? What did Jesus die for? The whole point of Jesus' death on the cross, folks, was for our sin, for those feelings that are way too heavy on us, whether it's sin or whether it's depression or suicidal feelings or whatever it is, they're the very things that Jesus died for. And on the cross, he died for sin and he died 
for your new life, your new life. And he wants you to leave the old behind and he wants you to gravitate to this new life. Now, when this life is all done, you're not judged by your sin if you're a Christian. But folks, the biggest separation is who received Jesus as personal savior, who invited Jesus into their lives, who asked forgiveness for their sins and made him Lord of their lives. And folks, from then on, we belong to him. And is there a single thing after that time that sends us to hell? No, not even this. Because Jesus paid the price even for this. It's a huge price. But the prerequisite, folks, is that we've received him as our personal savior. And you say, well, there it is, because Christians would never commit suicide. Not true. I know many that have. But folks, this is so important. And let's go to 1 Peter 5, 7 for this one. And he says, casting all of your cares, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you carefully. Jesus loves you. He loves you enough to die for you. And folks, even though you feel like something inside needs to die, if you just pay attention to the Holy Spirit inside of you, you will also feel that something needs to live. And that's you. And that's Christ living in you. And folks, if you pay attention to what God's doing in your life, and you get through that darkness that we sometimes go through in life, Christian or non-Christian, and you get to the other side of it and you kill what it is that's making you feel like death, and you begin to erase that from your life, begin to allow the Holy Spirit inside of you to give you his fruit of the Spirit and get through it, you'll be successful. That's how it works. And I'm so thankful for that. And folks, I'm so thankful that Jesus died for my sin, all of it, all of it, no matter what it is. He didn't pick some sins and not others. He said all sin. It's a good thing, isn't it? Folks, don't forget you are blessed. Go and be a blessing.